Good evening, and welcome to another spooky Wrath of Math lesson. Tonight, we'll be proving what's often called the inscribed angle theorem. It tells us how the measure of an inscribed angle relates to the measure of a central angle cutting the same arc. Pretty slick theorem, if I do say so myself. Let's go ahead and draw a circle and make sure we're all on the same page about what this theorem is stating, and then we will get into the proof. So there is a circle, and maybe the center is right there. What is an inscribed angle? Pretty straightforward. It's just an angle whose vertex lies on the circle and whose sides intersect the circle at some point other than the vertex. So maybe an inscribed angle looks something like this. Its vertex lies on the circle and its sides intersect the circle at some point other than the vertex. This inscribed angle happens to pass through the center of the circle, but that is certainly not necessary. Maybe we say that the measure of this inscribed angle is alpha. Notice that it cuts this arc of the circle. So what does the inscribed angle theorem tell us? Well, it tells us that the measure of an inscribed angle of a circle will be precisely half the measure of a central angle cutting the same arc. So here is a central angle of the circle, something like that. Its vertex is the center. That's why it's called a central angle. And it cuts the same arc as the inscribed angle. Maybe we say that the measure of this central angle is beta. The inscribed angle theorem that we're trying to prove tells us that in this situation, the measure of the inscribed angle will be precisely half the measure of the central angle that's cutting the same arc. So alpha is half of beta. I think it's pretty neat. So it tells us the measure of an inscribed angle depends only on the arc that it is cutting. Now it's a pretty straightforward proof, but it does have three different cases. Thankfully, they're all pretty basic. So let's just jump into it. Now, of course, knowing that a side of the angle a side of the inscribed angle passes through the center of a circle is pretty useful information. So that's where we're gonna start for case one. We wanna prove that alpha is equal to one half of beta and I will just erase it because we haven't proven it yet. So let's go ahead and prove it. Notice of course, in this situation, we've got something really nice. We've got this triangle here and what's special about this triangle? Well, it is isosceles. It has at least two congruent sides. We know that because this side of the triangle is a radius of the circle because it goes from the center to the circle. And this side of the triangle is also a radius of the circle because it goes from the center to the circle. So they must be congruent because radii of the same circle have the same length. Of course, they don't quite look the same uh, because this isn't a perfect drawing, but they are because they're both radii of the same circle. That means this is an isosceles triangle and thus by the isosceles triangle theorem, the angles opposite those congruent sides. So here's alpha opposite this side. This side is congruent to this side and this angle is opposite this side. So by the isosceles triangle theorem, the measure of that angle must also be alpha. These sides are congruent, so their opposite angles must also be congruent. And I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson proving that isosceles triangle theorem. Now, we'll easily be able to get to our result by an application of the exterior angle theorem. An exterior angle of a triangle is created when we extend a side of the triangle, then the angle between that line and another side of the triangle, that is an exterior angle. So beta here is an exterior angle of this triangle. The exterior angle theorem tells us that an exterior angle, so in this case beta, an exterior angle will have a measure equal to the sum of the two angles of the triangle that it is not adjacent to. Beta is adjacent to this angle of the triangle, so it's equal to the sum of the other two angles, alpha plus alpha. And even if you're not familiar with that theorem, it's very straightforward because let me explain it. 
the angle sum of a triangle is 180. So if we add this angle to alpha plus alpha, it will be equal to 180. However, this angle is also supplementary with beta. They form a line. So certainly this angle plus beta is also 180, but that means beta must be equal to alpha plus alpha because when you add either of them to this angle, you get 180. So we have that beta is equal to alpha plus alpha, thus of course 2 alpha is equal to beta, just adding them together and then flipping the order of the equality, and then dividing by 2 we get our desired result that the measure of the inscribed angle alpha is equal to one half the measure of the central angle beta that's cutting the same arc. And that is case 1 where a side of the angle a side of the inscribed angle passes through the center of the circle. Now conveniently, we will be able to use this first case to prove the next two cases without much trouble at all. So let's get into case two. I accidentally put the cap back on this black marker. It's new and the cap is very tight, kind of a bummer, especially with these gloves. But let's draw a circle and get into case two. Here is our circle, it's got a center right there. Case two is where the center of the circle lies within the inscribed angle. So in this situation, our inscribed angle would look something like this. The center of the circle lies inside the inscribed angle. Then our central angle, cutting the same arc, will look something like this. Now let's say that the measure of this central angle is beta, which we will indicate with a dotted line here. This has a measure of beta. And we'll say that the measure of our inscribed angle is once again alpha. So we'll just draw a little arrow. That angle has a measure of alpha. Now we know the diameter was really useful last time, so let's try introducing a diameter into this diagram, and then maybe we can use our previous case to prove this case as well, where the center is inside the inscribed angle. What diameter should we draw? I think the obvious uh, option is to draw a diameter that contains the vertex of the inscribed angle, and then of course passes through the center. There is a diameter, it's a little bit poorly drawn, but hopefully you see what we're talking about. Now of course, this diameter splits the inscribed angle alpha into two smaller angles. Let's call those angles alpha one and alpha two. It also splits our central angle beta into two smaller angles that we'll call beta one and beta two. Now we have some equalities, some basic equalities we can write. We know that alpha is equal to alpha one plus alpha two. Together, they make up that whole angle alpha. So we'll write that. Alpha is equal to alpha one plus alpha two. Similarly for beta. Beta is equal to beta one plus beta two. That's beta, it's equal to beta one plus beta two. And then what can we do? Just an easy application of case one of our proof, because look what we've got now. Alpha one is an inscribed angle that lies on the diameter of the circle, and it cuts the same arc as this central angle, beta one. So by case one of our proof, we know that alpha one has to be equal to one half of beta one. Because again, alpha one is an inscribed angle lying on the diameter, which is where our case one applied, and beta one is a central angle cutting the same arc. Similarly, alpha two is an inscribed angle lying on the diameter, and beta two is a central angle cutting the same arc. So we have that alpha two is equal to one half beta two. You can see where this is gonna go. We can rewrite alpha, which is equal to alpha one plus alpha two. By substitution, it's equal to one half beta one plus one half beta two. One half beta one plus one half beta two. Two. Then we can factor out a one half so that alpha is equal to one half beta one plus beta two, but beta one plus beta two is just beta. So we have that alpha is equal to one half of beta as we desire. So if we have an inscribed angle and the center of the circle lies within the inscribed angle, we see that the measure of that inscribed angle is half the measure of the central angle cutting the same arc. K 
case one and case two are done. That just leaves case three, where the center of the circle lies outside of the inscribed angle. And once again, we'll be able to apply case one and finish things up pretty quickly. All right, so here's what our case three looks like. We've got the center of the circle. It lies outside of this inscribed angle. Again, we're saying the measure of the inscribed angle is alpha, and it's cutting the same arc as this central angle beta. Once again, we know how useful it has been to draw a diameter in the diagram, so let's do that again. What diameter should we draw? The obvious choice is a diameter containing the vertex of the inscribed angle alpha. So it's going to contain that vertex, pass through the center like any good diameter, and look something like that. Now this is surprisingly useful, because what has this diameter just introduced? Well, it's introduced an inscribed angle right here that lies on the diameter. So we'll just draw a little arc there and we'll call that inscribed angle alpha prime. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to fit fit that in there, so let me just draw an arrow. We're calling this angle alpha prime. I'm trying to draw things a little bit bigger. Alpha prime. Okay, what else does it introduce? Well, it also introduces this central angle. It cuts the same arc as alpha prime. One more time, alpha prime is this inscribed angle here, and it's cutting the same arc as this central angle. We'll call this central angle beta prime. Beta prime, something like that. It's a little tough to draw because I can't rest my hand on the whiteboard, otherwise I will erase the diagram. All right, so now what do we know about uh, all this stuff going on here? Well, for starters, not only did we introduce this small inscribed angle by drawing this diameter, but we've also got this big inscribed angle now that consists of alpha plus alpha prime. In particular, alpha plus alpha prime is this big inscribed angle that contains the diameter of the circle. So again, that's alpha plus alpha prime. It's a big inscribed angle that contains the diameter of the circle. Thus, we can apply case one of our proof for inscribed angles that contain or pass through the, di uh, pass through the diameter or center of the circle we know that it has half the measure of the central angle cutting the same arc. What's the measure of the central angle cutting the same arc? Well, look at this. Beta plus beta prime is a central angle cutting the same arc as alpha plus alpha prime. So we know that alpha plus alpha prime is equal to one half of that angle. One half of beta plus beta prime. A lot of loud airplanes and uh, trains outside tonight. Don't know how how well they're picked up on the mic, but hopefully not very well. So we know that alpha plus alpha prime is equal to one half beta plus beta prime. Maybe we distribute the one half to get that alpha plus alpha prime is equal to one half beta plus one half beta prime. And then what would we like to do? I'll just bring the alpha plus alpha prime down here. Clearly, we would like to get rid of the alpha prime and the one-half beta prime so that we're left with what we want. Alpha equals one-half beta. But can we do that? Well, yes, we can. Because remember, alpha prime is itself an inscribed angle containing the diameter of the circle. So we can apply case one to say that the measure of alpha prime, since it's an inscribed angle passing through the center of the circle and thus containing a diameter, it must be one half the measure of this central angle that cuts the same arc. Beta prime cuts the same arc as alpha prime, so alpha prime is equal to one half the measure of that central angle, beta prime. Thus, we can subtract this equation from this equation, getting rid of alpha prime on the left and just leaving alpha, and getting rid of one half beta prime on the right and just leaving one half beta. Let me just redraw or rewrite that one, one half beta, and that completes case three, and thus the entirety of the inscribed angle 
theorem. If we have an inscribed angle of a circle, it will have precisely one half the measure of the central angle cutting the same arc. That's how you prove it, and I think it's pretty cool. So I hope this video helped you understand this fun little geometry proof. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.